All right, folks, welcome back. This is Tyler Hart here with another Microtech video. Um, I've been moving the studio from the basement to the upstairs. I have no green screen. I don't have most of my audio absorption or the sound absorption panels up on the wall or anything like that. We're running pretty bare bones, uh, but I've kind of been using that as an excuse to not record it. And it's time for me to get back on that horse and, and produce a little bit more content. Uh, so I wanted to do a video, a quick one, uh, just to kind of get me back into the flow. And this time we're going to cover Microtik firewalls. In particular, we're going to cover the firewall chains. Most of the time when I see people struggling with firewalls, it's because they don't understand how traffic flows through the firewall and they don't understand exactly how, how chains work. Now, the Microtik firewall is based on the Linux IP tables firewall. So, of course, you can refer to Microtik's own documentation. Uh, you can also refer to the IP tables documentation as well. Obviously, Microtik does not expose the actual Linux command terminal where you can enter IP tables commands, um, but you can read about the fundamentals of IP tables, and that will help you understand router OS as well. Now for this video, like, like I say, I, I don't have the green screen set up on here so you don't see me on the screen or anything like that. Um, hopefully next time I'll have the camera set up and the screen and, and we'll be a bit more personal about it. Personable, I should say. So to kind of help explain firewall chains and how they handle traffic going into and out of and through the routers, I've set up three routers here. And you can see that in the topology table. Um, we have the left router here. We have the center router up top that's connected to both of them. And then we have the right router here. Um, so I'll be sending traffic from the left up through the center to the right. So as we're looking at doing firewalling, for traffic forwarding, we got to send it through one router to get to another. So we'll do firewall rules on the center. Um, we can also set up firewall rules on the right to filter traffic inbound, and we can filter traffic going outbound from the left. So I'm going to kind of try to do all of my traffic flows from the from the left router over to the right, going through the center, just to kind of give you the full kind of end to end firewall chains experience. So to see where all the where those chains are, uh, all you need to do you need to click on IP and then firewall. And then right up here in the filter rules tab is where you will find the rules that uses that use those chains. Now I have completely wiped the default configuration from these devices um, so that so that we can start fresh, start simple, and easily see a demonstration of what these chains do. Um, so if you got one of these out of the box, with the rules, you'll see some input rules, you'll see some forward rules as well. So when I say input and forward, I'm talking about the chains, and you can see them here. It's the first option when we go to create a filter. So we have forward, input, and output. Those are the three default chains that are available in IP tables and therefore in router OS. You can create your own custom chains as well, but that is, that's beyond the scope of this video. So the first thing that we can do, let's talk about the forward chain. The forward chain applies traffic filtering rules to traffic going through the router. So if we look at the topology table, if I apply a forwarding rule on the center router, it will apply to traffic going from the left up through the center to the right. If I try pinging the center router from the left router, that traffic will not be filtered by that rule. It is because it's not going through the center router. So the forwarding rule is all about traffic that's being routed from one to another. I'm going to create a forward rule. I'm going to set the action just to accept, and I'm going to tell it to log this traffic so that we can see what that, we can see that traffic in the log. And I'm going to hit OK. 
So we have an accept rule on the forward chain. And then right now we have zero packets that have been that have hit this rule. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the left router. I'm going to open up a ping. And it looks like the right hand router is 192.168.1.2. So I'm going to send a ping from the left through the center to the right. And we should start to see these packets incrementing for that rule. Oh, there we go. We see we have good responses from the right back to the left. We see that our packet numbers are incrementing up here. So let's go ahead and stop this ping. Let's go ahead and look at the log. Lo and behold, we have traffic. Look, at where, and you can see it here, it is coming in Ether 1 and going out Ether 2. This is traffic being forwarded from one network to another. So there you go. Forwarding traffic applies to traffic going through the router. Let me actually, you know what? I'm going to open that ping back up. Let's try this. So I'll just show you how, how the forward traffic does not apply if I just try to ping from the left up to the center. Um, so I'll try to ping 10.0.0.1. If you, if you refer to the topology diagram in the upper right, uh, you'll see that the left router is 10.0.0.2. The center router is 10.0.0.1. We are going to ping directly from one to the other, and it should not hit that firewall. So it looks like we got pings coming back, and I do not see packets being incremented up here on the center route, because a forward rule does not capture that traffic. What would capture that traffic, however, is an input rule. So let's go ahead and create an input rule. Choose the chain, and we'll tell the router to accept the traffic and log it. Now, input chain captures traffic destined to the router itself. So this could be ICMP traffic if you're sending a ping directly to the router. It could be uh, neighbor discovery traffic going directly to the router. It could be routing protocol traffic if you had another router set up um, as a peer, and it was sending traffic directly to the center router. The input chain is going to capture that. And you can already see here, we, <laughs> we haven't even started the ping back up on the left router, and we already have traffic hitting this rule. Chances are that's probably neighbor discovery traffic, if I had to guess. So let's look at the log here. Uh, yep, traffic coming in Ether 3. And notice that the out, the traffic does not go out at all. So it's hit, it's going into the router and it's not going anywhere else. So it looks like it's poor, it's UDP. Uh, let's see if we can expand that a little bit. Oh, you know what this is? This is my traffic uh, from a management interface here, probably neighbor, neighbor discovery. So I'll, I'll close that out. I'm going to start this ping back up again from 10.0.0.2 to 10.0.0.1. So from the left router to the center router up here. Let's hit that again. Our, our pings are coming back. Our rule is incrementing. And notice, again, the forward rule is not incrementing at all because we are not forwarding any traffic uh, directly through center to the other to the right. So we talked about forward traffic. Forward traffic or the forward chain applies to traffic going through a device. The input chain applies to traffic going directly to the device and that leaves us with the output chain. Now the output chain is not used at all in the default firewall rules directly from Microtik. In fact, most people that use Microtik that I have seen do not utilize output rules. So and that's not to say they aren't useful, uh, but they have a very specific use case. 
So an output chain, the output chain, applies to traffic leaving directly from the router. This is different than forwarding traffic that is going out in interface because that traffic is not is not sourced directly from the router. It's being handled through the routing engine. The output chain is for, is for traffic leaving the router itself. For example, um, if we were sending pings directly from this router, maybe for troubleshooting or trace routing, that the output chain would handle that. If the router were sending out syslog messages or SNMP traps, the output chain would, would be responsible for filtering that. And most organizations just kind of trust that if traffic is going outbound directly from the router itself, it's probably trusted, like syslog or SNMP or something like that. Other organizations that are a bit more security conscious will create an output rule with a list of trusted IPs that the router is allowed to talk directly to, say, like a syslog collector or PRTG or the dude or something like that. Um, but for most organizations, output rules are just not necessary uh, for their operations. So I'm going to create this output rule. I'm just going to tell it to log just in case we want to look uh, directly at the traffic. So we see here, nothing's really happening on the output chain. I'm going to go to tools, ping. Let's try this. Let's ping the router on the right. That's 192.168.1.2. Hit go. And there we go. We are starting to see packets incrementing this counter from the output rule. Because these pings are coming directly from the router going outbound. So that, so that is the purview of the output chain. So again, just, just to kind of recap, input rules apply to traffic heading directly into the device. Output rules cover traffic leaving directly from the device. And then forward rules cover traffic coming into the device from somewhere else and then leaving the device going somewhere else. So that is routed traffic that's being forwarded. So being able to understand what these chains do and what kind of traffic they filter makes it so much easier to secure your router with good filter rules in your firewall. Um, like I said, you can also create your own custom chains as well, um, but that's, that's beyond the scope of this particular video. Again, if you want more information specifically about the chains, you can always look at the IP tables documentation. IP tables has been around for 20 years now. Its documentation is it's very thorough. It is very mature. Um, so you might that's that's a good complement to what Microtik offers uh, in its wiki and, and any other place that you might. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Um, we're, we're putting out, uh, just put out another blog post on manitonetworks.com. Uh, we're just putting out this video as well. I've got a couple others lined up. Uh, so please stay tuned, drop a comment, let me know what you think, and we'll see you next time.